Hi, I'm Brian with Level Up Reptiles, and today we're going to be talking about humidity. Today we're going to be talking about humidity a little bit. Be uh, touch up on heat too, because they they do uh, kind of go hand in hand. Uh, today we got Sony. If you guys uh, watched, we had that clutch that dropped last week. He is uh, the father of that clutch. He is a Mojave Pastel. I've showed him a couple times. This is the first time I've actually had him out. Pretty big male. He's probably about I don't know, 1,800 grams. But he should be uh, helping me out with those uh, GHI Mojaves I'm looking for. But he's gonna help out. He's gonna hang out. Um, but anyways, uh, humidity is different. I mean. Uh, People have different perspectives on what humidity should be. I think for the most part, I'd say your most average person, I guess, they purchase from a, a box store, right? And there's some misleading information that a lot of them big box stores have. If you read the card out of a big box store, it's gonna say have your humidity be all the time between 50 and 60%. In my experience, that's uh, it's probably too low. 50% is too low for sure. 60 is okay. The thing you got to know about humidity is if you keep it too low, that you're running a risk of not only getting a respiratory infection, but also then uh, having a really hard time shedding. <clears throat> and then if they're too high, You're better off to be too high than too low. As long as you got the proper heat, and that's where we're gonna get in heat in a little bit. He's all over the place. <clears throat> what are you doing? As long as you keep your heat high enough, your humidity could, I mean, as long as it's not constantly 90%, is usually all right. In these tubs, I'd say all their humidity in there, if I checked it, it's all going to be between, say, 65 and 75 percent, almost all of them. I keep it. I do have a humidifier in this room. I keep the room itself right on 50 percent, and then by the time I add some water to the substrate, it usually holds 70 percent for a good, good long time. I only, only put water maybe once a week, maybe. Um, if they, if I do see them about to go in the shed, I'll water them down a little bit, get the humidity up probably closer to 80. Now this is where we're gonna be getting into the, the temperature a little bit, is you can have a high, high humidity. If, you, if your ambient temperature is at 80, 82, it's not gonna do any harm. As long as the, the bedding doesn't stay soaked and they're laying on it, you're not gonna get scale rot from it. And that's the big concern about having humidity too high, is they can get start to get scale rot. And that's not true as long as the bedding on top is dry. Now here in just a few minutes, I'm gonna show you what bedding should look like when it's at the proper humidity. It's been a long time since I even checked these tubs for humidity, but I know it's right. They all shed good, they all eat really good. <clears throat> the only times I kind of have trouble is right at the start of spring and right around fall. Uh, kind of messes with it a little bit. I mean, when you go from like over the weekend, it was 80 degrees all weekend. Today, it basically snowed. So, let's uh, let me get him put back, and we will. I'll show you what kind of what the bedding should look like uh, with humidity. All right, guys, I him put back in the tub. This is his tub. We're going to use as an example. I probably haven't. I probably watered this. I don't know. Last week, yeah, sometime last week. But you see the the top is is dry, right? Like, but once we get down into underneath the bedding, it's wet. See that? How just kind of wet in there. That's what you want. That's I mean that's gonna give you perfect humidity. 
Now, sometimes with this, like I use cocoa husk, right? So sometimes if there's too much, the bottom will be really wet and the top will be dry, but it'll be matted down. And that's fine to keep humidity, but with that, it also causes your bedding to mold a lot faster. So I try to stay away from that. If I start seeing it kind of matted down, then I'll, I'll move it around to agitate a little bit <clears throat> to get rid of that. Um, let's see if I got any. I'm sure I got other ones. I mean, they're all going to look pretty much the same, I'd say. Like the... See how that's matted down just a little bit? Move it a little bit. That's all we got to do. It'll cause... It'll bring that wet up. But this is Zeke's tub. He wants to say hi. Take a look at Aria. You guys ain't seen her since she laid eggs. She ate for the first time this weekend, which is great. It's good news. She's back there hanging out. And her tub's gonna be really similar. Kind of moist on the bottom, dry on the top. They're never gonna get scale rot this way. And then it also keeps their humidity. I bet the humidity in here is probably 65%, maybe 70. And it's perfectly fine. I'm trying to see if I have an example here of what maybe too dry is, but I'm not even sure if I have any. Like, it's wet on the bottom. Get on top. Oh, Ellie. She's growing like a weed. She's gonna outgrow this tub before I know it. Looking for food. <laughs> These new babies I got, they're, they eat. Give them that, they eat. Look, open the tub. She's ready to eat some. But once again, perfect I really don't know here there's my orange dream calico inchy girl all right so this might be a hair too dry there's no moisture under there but I bet she's still got humidity in here enough like I said the room itself is at 50% not saying you guys at home have to do that. That's just gonna be more water you have to add to the substrate. Like you might have to add water two or three times a week versus once a week. All right guys, so that's my tubs. I'm just letting you guys know what my experience is. I'm not saying it's the right way. I'm not saying it's the wrong way. Uh, that's just what I use for my experience is 50% is way too low. And I know that's a lot of information a lot of the people I get, like I'm on different forums on Facebook and such. I listen to people every day. My snake won't eat. It sounds weird. It's it had perfect husbandry. You sit there and ask them, well, what's the temperature? What's the humidity? They're gonna say, well, it's at 50%. And the hot side's 78 what like just it's there's a lot of misinformation and a lot of them are coming from uh, stores i mean i grabbed a one at my local store just to see everything it said and it was there is a lot of misinformation and it's not the, the people who get the ball pythons fault it's really not it's just misinformation and uh well, we'll fix it so just a, just a little recap, I keep my humidity anywhere really from 65%. I'm not stressing out if it's at 80% because usually if it's at 80, I just sprayed it. I just put water in and it'll, it'll come down within about 10 hours back to about where I wanted about 70. 
that's another thing I wanted to get into with adding water. I said it myself just because I've heard it so many times. That's what I call it, even though I don't do it, is uh, spraying the tank. I wouldn't suggest spraying the tank. A spray isn't going to do much of anything. I don't know all the basis of it, but I've also heard that can cause RI just from that much moisture, the spray in the air. How true that is, I don't know. Something I've heard. <clears throat> He's wanting in my face. But I always add water. Like I have a, this is what I use. I literally pour the water on the substrate to get it wet and that water will fall off the top of the substrate and usually end up in the bottom, which is how I get the moisture on the bottom to stay is because I really add some water to it. Not to where it's soaking wet, but I, I, I add water versus like, uh, we got, I got spray, a spray. You'd be sitting there doing that all day to get enough water in there. If you're spraying, I don't care if it causes RI or not, but you're going to be spraying multiple times a day. You're never going to get enough water in there unless you just sit there for 20 minutes straight just spraying the same spot. It's not going to do the same thing as just adding water with a can. <clears throat> and heat, like I said, you can have high humidity as long as the heat's right. 80, 82, ambient, and even if you keep it, keep your snake in a, a glass a glass tank. Don't condone it, but if you do, I've had ball pythons when I was younger. I had them in glass tanks. That's uh, the way it is. <clears throat> but if I did it even in glass tanks, out of my shirt, even glass tanks, you can have, if your house is 70, if you keep your house at 70 degrees all year round, your ambient and your tank's gonna be 70. But what you can do is that a ceramic heater and set it to 80. That way, at least inside your closure, it's 80 degrees in there. And then you can use a heat mat for the floor to set it at 90 to get your hot spot. That's how I would prefer to do it. That's how I've done it and it's worked. Uh, PVC enclosures, all you really need is a radiant heat panel. And uh, I got, I got, <clears throat> And I know about the heat panels and the heat mats, what I recommend. If you want to know more about heat mats and radiate panels, uh, check out my link right above here. Should be somewhere up there. Me and Zeke will appreciate it. Look at him. He's all over the place. I, don't, I can't find a snake to stay still for save my life. They're always <clears throat> on their uh, natural climbing habitat. But that's just my thoughts on humidity. Uh, if you got any questions, don't hesitate to comment. I, I will answer them all day. He is on a mission. But till next time, don't forget to like, subscribe, share to a friend. I'm Brian Love Up Reptiles. What level are you on?